Right. Measurements of inflation. There are several measurements of inflation, of which the two key measures are RPI, the Retail Price Index, and CPI, the Consumer Price Index. Really, the RPI and the CPI are very, very similar, but the RPI just includes slightly more than CPI. The RPI includes housing costs that the CPI doesn't, such as mortgage interest repayments, council tax and rent, for example, whereas the CPI does not include those things at all. Similarly, the RPI and the CPI are calculated using different means. The RPI is calculated using an arithmetic mean, whereas the CPI is calculated using a geometric mean, which means the RPI will always tend to give a higher rate of inflation than the CPI will. But the key measure of inflation that you need to know is the consumer price index. That's the one that the governments use in most countries to target inflation. So when we talk about the macro objective of government being low and stable inflation, we're talking about CPI inflation. Right, CPI consumer price index is an index and it's calculated in these key steps. So this is the UK. Make sure you understand all of these steps uh, from one right down through to seven and then you can explain it if it came up in the exam. So how's it done? Well, first of all, a family expenditure survey is sent to about 10,000 uh, different households in the UK. And what these households, what these citizens and consumers need to do is they have to track over a two-week period what they're actually spending on, how much they're spending, what goods and services um, they're actually buying, and where they're buying from um, in a two-week period. All that data is then collected, and the most popular 650 goods and services are then collected and put into like an imaginary basket, if you will. So from that data, 650 goods and services are chosen. Weights are then attached to those goods and services. So if you want to consider, I know, consider it as a percentage, let's say. Um, how important are those goods and services? And the way that's determined is uh, these people look at the percentage of income spent on these goods and services. So if, I don't know, from the survey that's come out, 50% of uh, people's income is spent on fuel, right, which is as ridiculous as that, then the weighting on fuel would be 0.5. Right? So between 0 and 1, 0.5 would be the weighting. So that's how it's done. Weights are attached to all of these goods and services, all, all 650, given the percentage of income spent on these goods and services. Mm -hmm. Then we move into index. So we pick a base year. Whatever year that might be. So if it's 2005, it's 2005. If it's 2006, it's 2006. Doesn't matter. We pick a base year, and whatever inflation was in that year, we then just say, right, call it 100. Whatever it was then, call it 100. A base year is selected, which has an index of 100. We then generate index numbers. So we have 100 for the base year. We then need to generate index numbers. So all that's done very, very simply is inflation is tracked over time, um, it's measured over time, and the index numbers as they change uh, then give you a measure of the rate of change of inflation. So index numbers are generated, there is then a monthly collection of data of which an annual percentage rate can be measured, an annual percentage change can be measured, um, and finally a, the basket of goods and weights can be changed every year. So as our consumption habits change, the basket of goods can change. So these services keep getting sent out. And uh, if we need to change these goods and services, then it can be done. Let me just go back to this. What do I mean by the whole index number thing and how can that help us determine what the rate of inflation is? Well, let's say um, initially inflation was at 100, so we're at the base year. Let's say the next year it goes to 110. Well, that tells you that in this year, if that's 2006 and the base year, that's over 2005. Well, by using index numbers, right, by using index numbers, we can calculate the percentage change. So the percentage change, the difference over the original times by 100, 10 over 100 times by 100 is 10%. So by using index numbers, it helps, helps us calculate inflation very simply. So if the next year inflation went to 115, right, to work out the percentage change, it's 5 over 110 times by 100 and that will give you the inflation rate for 2007. Okay, so that's what I mean by index numbers are used. But there are problems with using CPI. There are some significant problems as well, which you need to know as, uh, at the same time. 
So one theme we might be learning now is that no rate, no measurement, I should say, is ever perfect. For whatever indicator it might be, growth, unemployment, inflation, whatever, they've all got flaws, and they're all very important for you to understand. So one of the main flaws of inflation, one of the main problems, is that the basket may not be representative of all consumers in the economy. And that's important. So the 650 goods and services chart might be a good average, but it might not be specific to every individual in the economy. Right? I might buy certain goods and services that are not included in that basket. I might, include good and, I might buy goods and services that for me uh, are a much greater percentage of my income than what's weighted in the basket. So the basket might not be representative of all consumers. So even though the inflation rate might be 2.5% in the economy, my personal inflation rate might be much higher, it might be much lower. Right? Each person's basket is different. Second of all, because again, it comes from a survey, there might be inaccuracies in the data. Right? There might be an error in data collection. Something you can always use, and that's very real, definitely, which is why you get revised figures, often with a lot of these indicators. At the same time, um, other countries may use different measures, which then confuses things. So if in the UK we use the CPI, but other countries use the RPI or an even a different measure, things can get very confusing. So that's not very good either. Um, as a measurement of inflation and CPI, if other people are using different measures, it makes comparison very, very difficult. Right. Second of all, if that's the case, number one, it might take a while for the basket to change. So every year the basket of goods and services changes, but what if um, every month our consumption habits change? In which case the basket's changing too slowly. So the time it takes for the basket to change might again distort the true impact on inflation. It might not give us the real impact on what inflation actually is because of the time it takes. And at the same time, if the basket's changing, okay, so if the basket keeps changing, then comparisons to the past become difficult. And this is another important one. There's no point looking and comparing inflation now to inflation in, I don't know, uh, 10 years ago, if the basket was completely different 10 years ago. Because inflation now means something completely different to what inflation meant 10 years ago. So again, we keep changing the basket fine, it's important that we do, but that makes past comparison to inflation very difficult. Similarly, there are some problems with this measure as well, not necessarily flaws of the, of the uh, calculation itself, but some risks involved. Um, one of the major risks is, well, inflation isn't just the only indicator that we should use. We need to consider other um, measures to give us a total idea of how the economy is performing. A lot of economists will look at inflation as the be-all and end-all when it comes to the performance of the economy. That shouldn't be the case, so bear that in mind. Inflation gives us a, kind of a nice overview of what's going on, but not the whole picture. We need other indicators as well. Similarly, we need to understand that there might be seasonal fluctuations in inflation. And if that's the case, um, we need to kind of find a way to exclude those seasonal variations and look at maybe a core measure of inflation instead. Um, at the same time, there are other types of indexes that can give us better guides of what's going to happen with inflation. So CPI is very much a case of what's happened. Um, other indexes, um, such as the producer price index, can give us a forward-looking guide as to what's going to happen with inflation. So those three things at the end there are considerations worth making. These are the flaws with CPI. Those other three things are kind of the risks with interpreting CPI. So bear that in mind. That's a very important video. I hope it makes sense. See you next time. Thank you.